Serious Survivor here. And today we're going to talk about how to vacuum seal foods. And we're also going to look at vacuum sealing ammunition. Now oxidation is the process that turns things such as an apple brown and turns iron into rust. Not only does oxygen cause the bland stale taste we all know, but it destroys nutrients and supports contamination that occurs from mold and oxygen dependent microorganisms. Oxygen absorbing packets or OAPs are much better than other preservation methods because they effectively eliminate oxygen and can protect perishables from these long term effects. The container you choose is extremely important and will determine how long your food will remain preserved. The very best containers are those used in canning such as mason jars and the metallized mylar bags because oxygen cannot go through metal or glass. Mylar is a transparent film of incredible strength and there are many kinds of mylar films. For food storage, the film is metallized to enhance its oxygen barrier properties. Many people think that because a bag is thicker, it's better, but the quality and thickness of the metal layer is what's actually important when storing food for the long term. So the process of vacuum sealing is pretty straightforward, and we're going to look here at that process on both food and also on ammunition. Due to the recent ammunition shortage that I think a lot of people are seeing, then we don't always get the types of ammunition that we want to get our hands on. Sometimes we're forced to buy reloads. Sometimes we're forced to buy the steel case ammo. And especially with the steel case ammo, these are very susceptible to rust. And in any environment that is susceptible to high levels of moisture or big changes in the environment, such as hot to cold at night, hot in the day, cold at night, changes in the humidity in the air, this makes your ammunition susceptible when storing it for the long term. So keeping it in a vacuum sealed bag is definitely a good idea if you have the means, the time, and a little bit of money to do it with. So let's get started and look at food vacuum sealing followed by ammunition vacuum sealing. So for this process, we're gonna need a few things, uh, not that many. First of all, what you're gonna need is your vacuum sealer of some type. The vacuum sealer that I'm using, I just had to buy a new one because my last one, the uh, heating element in it went out. And this happens to be a food saver, save a meal. It was about 50 bucks. The next thing is, if you're gonna measure out of the large packages is a measuring cup, a Sharpie, something that we can write on the packages what's actually in there so we don't lose track because you can't see through these mylar bags or food of course whatever types of food that you're deciding that you want to preserve here and then your choice of bags i've got three different types of bags here the mylar bags that i've got i got from this company pack fresh usa this particular set of bags are five gallon bags so these are for a lot of food you know these are for the big 20 pound bags you know maybe 50 pound bags of rice or beans uh, things like that so these are, are really really big now i have those because i do use them on occasion but i do prefer to use something a little smaller these came from the same company but these are one gallon bags and what this does is it gives me the ability to put a smaller amount of food because if I've got a five gallon bag and I've got that five gallon bag inside of a five gallon bucket, well, when I break that seal on it, well, it's time to eat that food now. You know, so you, you may want to be able to mix it up a little bit to be able to change it up. And we can do that by storing small amounts of food in smaller packages. And this also enables you, like if you have a fixed amount of people that you know you're gonna be feeding. Me, I got four sons here, so that's five people. So I'm gonna wanna put, you know, five servings minimum in each one of these bags. And the advantage that it gives me is that when it's time to do the cooking, when it's time to open one of these bags, I just grab one, whatever I want, whether it's the rice, the beans, or, or whatever, I grab one bag and I know that it's enough for all five of us. Now there are also other types of bags on the market. You have your standard little see-through bags like these, these plastic bags. And those are great for freezer bags. You can also get the rolls like this. The rolls are basically just rolls. And these here are eight inches wide. So they're eight inches wide. And you can just pull out how much you need, cut it, and then seal both sides. And your food is, you know, should be good to go. But for long-term storage, we would probably want to stick closer to these type right here. Another thing that I use, and I'll, we'll see why in a minute, are the large Ziploc bags. The large one gallon Ziploc bags here. And I use these because after I seal this, then I'm gonna put it inside this Ziploc bag. And probably one of the most important things 
are your OAPs, your oxygen absorber packets. And there's a lot of different types on the market. These came with the bags that are ordered from uh, the company that we had mentioned. But now we're gonna look at how to do it. But after this section, there'll be some charts up that show how many of your OAPs here, your oxygen packets that you should use depending on the amount of food that you put in. I'm gonna use the one gallon bags. Here. Now the reason I got these packets, these smaller packets right here. Now I know as preppers we tend to buy things in bulk. I buy everything I can in bulk. But we saw a pretty big shortage earlier this year. And with that shortage, there were no 50 pound bags of rice. There weren't even 20 pound bags of rice. I was lucky to get one pound and two pound bags. So you may not always be able to get those larger bags, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, as long as you have what you need, then it doesn't matter if you buy it like this or you buy it in bulk. One of the reasons I do like to buy a lot of the smaller packages is because you get a variety. You can get a variety. You're not just stuck with uh, 50 pounds of pinto beans. Here you can have multiple types of beans all in their own package. See some lima beans there rice and we can even do stuff like this all right so the process very simple I'm gonna take my measuring cup I'm gonna start with my light red kidney beans now the benefit to doing these small packages they're already measured out I know exactly how much is going on here by what's on the back of the bag it tells me there's about 13 servings per container and the serving size is a quarter cup beans dry. So a quarter cup, 13 servings, that tells me I got a little bit over three cups of beans in here. So for a family of five, like me and my sons, that would be just about right for us. Because my boys are pretty big. They eat a lot. They're pretty tall. They eat a lot. I eat a lot too. So, so I'm going to go ahead and put these into my measuring cup. Could just pour them right out of the bag, but I just sort of like to see what I got here. All right, so we got our beans. So what I'm gonna do now, and I did wash my hands before I did all this, in case anyone's wondering, is I'm gonna take and place my food in the bag. But with the situation of what I'm doing here, I'm putting just enough in each bag so that it would be one meal for me and my sons, then this bag is gonna be overkill for this amount of food. So I'm gonna cut this bag exactly in half so that I can use one side for this and the other side for something else. So I'm gonna begin by doing that. All right, so I'm gonna use that big of a bag to seal this in. But next, don't forget, very easy to forget when you get to doing this process are your OAPs. This is a pretty small amount of food so according to the charts, uh, I'll be putting those up at the end of the video. Then one packet will be enough for what I'm putting in here. Okay, so now that I've got my food ready, my OAP in it, next is to seal it. So I'm just gonna bring this little thing up. Now this has a little trough or a little tray in here. Let me pull it up as far as I can. It has a little tray in here. So I'm gonna take that out and you wanna place once again, I'm working as much air out as I can before I start. And you're going to place the open end. Just push it down into the trough like that. Then put the trough over it. All right, now once you've got it in here, once you've got it in place, press any excess oxygen that you can out of it. It makes it easier on the machine. Beautiful. Just put it up. And now let's look at it. Nice, nice, nice. And see, I could have even went maybe a little shorter. I like I like to save space because I store a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So I need to save all the space I can. But here we go. This is basically, you know, it's, it's pretty solid like that. So my final step with this is I'm gonna label the Ziploc bag here. And these were my light red kidney beans place these in here. And the reason I put them in here is because there is some type of accident if this does get punctured then I, I have this bag here that I can you know, keep storing them in. Or let's say I cook all these tonight. Maybe it's just me. 
and and I have to open them up so I go ahead and cook them I can put the remains in here and eat them in a couple hours or you know a few hours from now something like that but this is just a thing I personally do I do this with my long-term food too my long-term survival food that you buy you know freeze-dried I take each packet out and I package it just like this all right the last thing that I want to talk about here is ammunition there are some types of ammunition that in my opinion are much safer and are much better off stored in a you know airtight environment whether that's be an airtight container or vacuum cylinder so we're going to look at one type of ammo here and you can sort of you know form your opinion on that due to the ammo shortages that we've seen a lot of us have been forced to buy brands of ammo that maybe we don't always use uh, don't normally use now i'm not saying there's anything wrong with this brand at all these bullets shoot just fine but the problem is these are steel cases steel cases will oxidize they will rust we're gonna vacuum seal these we're gonna try to vacuum seal these in a clear bag I'm gonna use one of these clear food saver bags that actually came with this product here that I bought now as you can see it's not a whole 50 rounds but we're gonna go ahead and work with that some people would uh, take them out and place them individually down here I prefer to keep them in their case. Um, this type of case is rounded. There are really no sharp edges on it. If I had sharp edges, I would reconsider. But all the edges on this are rounded. So I'm just going to place my nine millimeter steel ammunition here. Place it right here. And we're gonna see if we can pull all the air out of that, how well that works. And there we go, a nice solid block of ammo. Uh, this is gonna be good. This, these steel cases are not going to oxidize and rust. They should be good for quite a while in there. I mean, and it's not a bad idea to do this, especially let's say for people who are in a swampy area, people who are in a mountainous region where it's extremely wet and you think you may be bugging out through those areas, this wouldn't be a bad idea. So let's go ahead and do some 5.56 five, here. Now, as you can see, 5.56, five, those of you that shoot 5.56, five, looking at that tip, know exactly what these are. So I'm going to do these, but I'm also going to leave them in this box. And the reason I'm going to leave them in the box is because most of your 5.56 five, is going to be somewhat, you know, pointed. Not all of it, of course, but these particular rounds are pointed. So, uh, and you can see that they're on stripper clips here. So I'm going to keep these in the box, and I'm going to seal those up too. There we go. There we go. Nice and airtight. Good to go. Good to go. So, uh, two things that I can never stop buying. That's food and ammo. I buy a lot of it. Got a lot of guns already, but food and ammo. It's two things that I buy a lot of. I store a lot of, but I use a lot of too. Uh, we eat a lot of food around here and shoot a lot of guns. But check out the following information and hopefully it'll help someone out.